We'll start with a quote today. And that quote is, power is a word, the meaning of which we do not understand. That was said by Leo Tolstoy who, uh, in War and Peace. He's a Nobel Peace Prize winner. Um, and uh, he was uh, an author, a Russian author. Um, if you are not familiar with him, you should look into him. Really, really fascinating guy. But I think that's a great quote. Uh, power is a word, the meaning of which we do not understand. It's a powerful quote, to be honest. Um, and in honor of that quote, let's use today's episode to take a look at the idea of power. And more specifically, let's look at the source of power. You see, power is typically, uh, it lies with uh, control of the same thing things throughout history. So wherever you see power, it's usually um, usually presides with people that control certain aspects of society, such as information, military strength, uh, transportation, fuel, finances, etc. Right? It's like a bunch of a bunch of those things. Whoever controls those things um, is usually usually the people or the countries or the places with with a lot of power in the world. However, the source of that control shifts throughout history. And therefore, I think part of the reason that power is so hard to understand, going back to that quote, is that the actual concept of power, like the the source of that power, is constantly changing. For example, during the 1200s, Genghis Khan and the Mongol army were the most powerful force on the planet. And that was really due to their their ability to ride horses. Uh, it was also due to the volume of horses that they had. They were expert uh, horse riders. And because of that, they had a massive military advantage. And that, that created a lot of power for them. But nowadays, being skilled on horseback is literally useless from a military perspective. We, we literally have specter gunships that can erase you from 7,000 feet in the air like they're the finger of God, as Marcus Luttrell said the other day on Joe Rogan's podcast. And so being a, an expert horse army <laughs> is not super helpful anymore. But at a time, the source of power uh, really did rely on on or or it was with the armies that were the 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 more equipped on horseback and um you you can also look throughout history for a bunch of examples like this right um there's sir john uh hublin and the bank of england in 1694 uh they were founded as a private bank that would act as a banker for the government in england and in their own words uh they were quote primarily founded to fund the war effort against France. So imagine the global power that the Bank of England had simply due to the fact that they had the ability to fund the crown's war against the French. Like, think about how much power resided with them at that time due to the context of that war and that period in history where, you know, nowadays, I'm not saying that the Bank of England isn't powerful. I'm just saying at that time, they were probably the most powerful bank in the world. And nowadays that that power has shifted, right? So it's it's always a context, right? There's always there's always context necessary wherein you're looking for the source of power. Currently, for example, we don't view American railroad ownership as a as a major source of power by any means. But during the 1800s, you've got a guy like Cornelius Vanderbilt who used his ownership of the railroads to become one of the wealthiest people in history. And if you if you adjust for inflation, uh, his his worth, uh, his net worth, rather, he would have been worth one hundred and eighty five billion dollars in today's money. And while transportation is still a major source of power, like I was talking about, um, the control of it is is a major source of power. Um, air travel and trucking routes have really lessened the impact of railroads um, by comparison to the 1800s, right? Nowadays, there are other uh, means of transportation that you would probably rather control, and in the future, there will be different ones. And so, once again, we, we could keep going through uh, all these historical sources of power, like religion, or the printing press, or oil, or nuclear weapons, but I think you get the point. Um, throughout history, it's it's hard to understand power 
partially because it's hard to understand where that primary source of it lies at any given time. 